Hello, students. This is the video I'm recording on Sunday, Sunday night, and it's for Monday. I'm not sure what the date is. Let me see. This is for Monday, April the 27th. Uh, it's fiscal policy. Remember what happened one day? I talked about aggregate demand. That was Thursdays. Aggregate supply, which was Fridays. Monday's video is uh, on fiscal policy, and those three sets of notes need to be, you know, taken together. You need to take pictures of them, send them to me by Monday night, Tuesday morning. Because Tuesday, unless I go out of town, because remember, I may have to go out of town all of a sudden. Unless I go out of town, Tuesday, you're going to be doing one of these face-to-face, -face, like we did a couple of weeks ago, where I ask you a bunch of questions on this. So we've done three days worth of notes. This is the third set. And this is going to be our first um, quiz we've done in a while. Okay. So uh, fiscal policy. So go ahead and, and title your paper this way, and we're going to move on here. Okay. We're still playing off this one graph here, the same graph we've been working on. I've been reading up on what the other AP teachers are saying, and they believe that you are still going to have to understand these graphs, even though apparently you don't have to draw them. Um, all right. So my goal is in the future is to try and get your assignments to you at nine o'clock the night before. I know a lot of you are nocturnal creatures. By the way, I talked to my son today. Now that we've learned how to do Zoom, we're doing these Zoom family chats. And my son is a video game designer. Right now he's working making government apps. It's all top secret. If he tells me what he's doing and he has to kill me. But uh, I told him, I said, well, this, this coronavirus hasn't changed your job at all. He is working at home now. You stare at one screen, writing computer apps, and then you go to another screen and play video games. That's all you do all day. And he laughed. He goes, yeah, dad, I just want to give you some computer programmer slang. He goes, yeah, dad. He goes, we call that um, bad screen and good screen. He goes, so I work all day doing my bad screen time, and then I get to play video games my good screen time. Uh, anyway, a little, little slang there for you. But I know a lot of you, like him, just like I tend to do if I don't pay attention over the summer, a lot of you are sleeping until like 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon and doing your work at night, and I don't really have a problem with that. I mean, um, that's how a lot of people live their lives. So I intend to give you these videos, and then you can do them whenever you want. Uh, but you need to be ready Tuesday for your essays. Okay, so anyway, this is fiscal policy, the most important topic in all of it. This is the most important graph, and the most important topic is fiscal policy. Second most important is monetary. Okay, so moving on. All right, fiscal policy, let's talk about what it is. It's using taxes and government, and you're going to write this down. You're going to take notes here. It's using taxes and government spending to stabilize the economy. I hope you remember the third thing. A lot of teachers skip it. It's transfer payments. And you, you're going to write that down later. You don't need to write that down now. It's using taxes and the government spending to stabilize the economy. And it's controlled by president and the Congress. I guess at some, you know, some point the Supreme Court could try to block something they thought was unconstitutional. But I, you know, I, I don't never, I don't know if that ever happening. But control, I'm sure there's some examples. Controlled by president and the Congress, uh, and there's some terms for you know discretionary fiscal policy, uh, and this means it's up to the government. Some things are discretionary, and you know I don't know if you've ever heard the term where people say you know do what you want at your discretion. So uh, I don't know about the definition here in the lecture. I would say this is discretionary fiscal policy is what the government chooses to do. Okay, remember, all spending bills originate in the House of Representatives, must get approved by the Senate, approved or not approved by the President, they can override his veto. You're supposed to know all that from government. Um, and there's this term called automatic stabilizers. I do not remember if I talked about this before, but uh, I have a pretty dumb example. And, and I think I did it. I think I remember doing it second semester. I did it first semester. This is the idea that, you know, let's say you increase government spending. Okay, so we're trying to boost the economy. You increase government spending, it goes out. Well, if you increase government spending, people getting these government contracts like my son all of a sudden making a lot more money. They're making more money. What goes up? Taxes. And so let's say, I'm, and I'm gonna, I always use the example of someone slamming on brakes and you mostly go forward and then you go back a little bit. So an automatic stabilizer means if the government spends a lot of money, yes, they're gonna have to spend tax money to do that. The deficit might get bigger, but as they spend money, people getting this money are going to pay more in taxes. So the economy goes up. We're going to just throw some math in here. It goes up $100, and then it comes back $10, okay, and vice versa. 
if the economy goes into a recession, demand drops, um, government, um, you know, uh, people are making less money, so they're spending less money. But if they're not making money, their taxes go down. So the government goes, the, the economy goes way down, but then it comes back a little bit because people have, are not spending as much in taxes. And I hope that makes sense. It may not. I tried to use an example of a spaceship one year and my AP macro kids about three years ago told me it was the dumbest thing they've ever heard. I do try to go wet on a limb trying to explain stuff to you. If you're having trouble understanding it, email me or look up a Clifford video. Anyway, I've already spent more time on that probably than it deserves. Okay, types of fiscal policy. Okay, two types. Expansionary. I'm not going to get up and show you, you know, someone getting fat. I always tell the story about the t-shirts. Expansionary. You want to put some gas into the economy or you want to pump the accelerator. Expansionary. You want to speed it up. Contraction, um, okay, all right. And this is used to fight a recession. So go ahead and write these notes down. And here's the three things, lower taxes, increase government spending. Now remember, this is your go-to answer. So Wednesday or Tuesday, whatever day we do these questions that I'm gonna give you, if I ask you we're in recession, what's the easiest thing the government can do? You, you can put lower taxes, but the easiest thing to do is say increase government spending, okay? This big stimulus that the government just sent everybody, is really not government spending. They're giving people money. It's just, and they're really not even, for most people, they're giving them money like for us. We got some money, but we pay quite a bit. And, you know, we're not millionaires, but what they're really doing is giving me back some of my tax money from last year. So it's pretty much operating like a tax cut because I haven't spent it all yet. Uh, so there's, anyway, I don't want to get off topic here, but this, this, the stimulus they did is not, when Obama did a stimulus, it was really boosting the economy. They actually increased spending. This is kind of like a tax refund or lowering of taxes. Just remember, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. We talked about this in detail. Which one? We're not going to do multipliers this time. That's, that's going to be probably in Tuesday, you know, Wednesday's video, Thursday's video. We will talk about multipliers right now. We're not going to worry about that. Which has a greater effect on the economy? Increase in spending or a decrease in taxes? And the answer is spending. Because when you spend, all the money goes in the economy. When you give a tax decrease, a lot of it, some of it people don't spend, so it doesn't have that effect. Anyway, here's the two main things. There is the third one. I want you to write it down. Increase government transfers. And that's like welfare, food stamps, military, retirement, social security. The definition of a government transfer, I don't like it. But the, the literal definition is uh, people getting money from the government they haven't earned. I would argue that Social Security is kind of what you earned, and definitely your military retirement is what you've earned. But whenever a transfer of wealth is when the government takes money from one person and gives it to another person. And that's what, when you raise taxes on people who are, have jobs and you give it to people who don't have jobs, or you, you raise it on one group and give it to another group, whether or not they've got jobs, that is a transfer of wealth. So increasing government transfers is the third one. It's very unlikely they'll use it, but you might. All right, these are the th three types of expansionary fiscal policies. And the one, like I said, the go your go-to one is increased government spending. Uh, and if, you don't, if you're not sure, you got a 50-50 shot, increase government spending or decrease government spending. All right, let's do contractionary. Contractionary used to fight inflation. Um, this is when they are trying to slow the economy down. Uh, they raise taxes, they decrease government spending. That's where the government is spending, let's say, uh, $100 billion a year buying new new cars, new Jeeps, whatever, new trucks, whatever, for the post office. And then all of a sudden they say, okay, we've been buying you know, this much every year. Next year, we're not going to buy it. And so the company that was making them now doesn't have that money. And so they can't pay their employees who can't pay their child support. And that people getting the child support can't buy feed, you know, can't go to the Pizza Hut drive through and has a multiplying effect. And so uh, we don't want to talk about the multiplier yet, though. They're slowing the economy down. So raise taxes. Remember, raising taxes is generally considered to be bad. I know a lot of you guys in your age group think it's a good thing. Well, you wait till you're paying them. We'll see. I know some of you already have jobs. Very likely that when you start making money, you're going to have a totally different opinion on taxes. You might want to ask your parents about that one. Decrease government spending. And the third one, decrease government transfers. 
imagine that going telling old people, hey, we're not we're gonna cut down how much social social security you're getting, not politically smart. But here are the three tools. Okay. All right, going on to the next slide, make sure you have these. These will play prominently in your Tuesday questions. I'm probably gonna do like I've done before. I'm gonna call you in one in time and give you like three questions. On this one, I'm probably not gonna let you miss one and get 100%. Maybe I'll ask you four and you gotta get three right, but I'm gonna expect you because this stuff is so important to get you know pretty much all of these right. All right, moving on. Expansionary fiscal policy. Okay, so here is the definition. Increasing government spending or cutting taxes, and it's going to shift AD to the right and increase output in the price level. My goal tonight is, remember this is Sunday night, my goal tonight is to get this thing done in 15 minutes so we don't have two videos, we have one. And right now we're almost at 11 minutes. Okay, here is the graph. And I want you to pause the video and copy this. Okay. So you got price level and real GDP. So what happens is this is a recession, remember? The government boosts spending. Remember, this is C plus I plus G plus X minus I M. Remember that? And this is G that's being increased. If you increase government spending, this thing shifts to the right. Now, what's the loss here? The bad thing? Well, inflation goes up. What's the good thing? GDP goes up, means the economy is starting to hum. People are getting jobs. And uh, if GDP is going up, that's synonymous with employment going up, then unemployment is going down. Okay, make sure you understand that. I might ask you on whatever day you do your quiz, Tuesday, I'm hoping, I might say, hey, if AD goes up, what's the win? What's the loss? So make sure that you have all this down. You're not gonna be able to look at your notes because we're gonna do these really quickly. It's, it's, it takes me a long time to give a face-to-face -face quiz to 60 kids in a couple of hours. All right, moving on. Contractionary fiscal policy. Raising taxes or reducing government spending or, of course, um, cutting government transfers to fight inflation and stabilize the economy. Write that down in here, again, is the graph. So let's talk about oh, what happens here, okay? Uh, so you can pause this and copy this down. Okay, now here's what's happened. The government, we're gonna just say they have decreased government spending. So they're now not buying those postal trucks. And so the postal workers are not uh, buying surfboards. Again, I'm getting into the multiplier, but we won't worry about the amount right now. They're not gonna buy surfboards. The surfboard people aren't gonna buy cars. The car people aren't gonna buy kayaks. The kayak people aren't gonna put a new porch on their house. The people, uh, the porch builders are not gonna put a pool in their yard. The, the pool builders are not gonna be able to take their dog to the vet. Anyway, there's gonna be a ripple effect and that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to slow the economy down. Uh, anyway, and so what happens is aggregate demand shifts back to the left. And what's gonna happen is, what's the win here? Well, the win is prices go down. Because remember, an inflationary gap, that's what they wanna stop. They, inflation, remember, is considered just as bad as unemployment. Um, so they want price level to go down, which means inflation is gonna drop. And then GDP is gonna go down. This is the bad thing. As GDP goes down, that means we're not making as much stuff and employment is gonna go down, which means that the twin evil of inflation, uh, unemployment is going up. And at this point, I believe I am done and it's the most amazing thing I'm done in over 15 minutes. Now, what you need to spend the rest of your time doing is running through these scenarios in your head. Because it's, you know, it's gonna be you and me talking and I'm gonna ask you some questions about supply and demand and I've tried to keep everything else out of it. Okay, so that's all we're worried about is ADSRS and what's happening. And so unless again, I'm going out of town or something, I will see you Tuesday.